Permutations are a little more common on the ACT than combinations are. It's a little bit more of an expansive topic, so this is gonna be a little bit longer of a video. Now, permutations are how many ways we can order something when we actually care about the order. So let's say that we've got a race and there are three runners, A, B, and C. And a race is a really good example for this because order obviously matters in a race. Now, when our runners are still on the track, all three of them can finish first. So let's say A wins. Now, now that A's won, A can't finish second and the, he or she can't finish third. So there's only two possibilities for who can finish second. Let's say it's B. Now, once B has finished, C has to finish third. So we went from three possible finishers to two possible finishers to one possible finisher. Let's look at the rest of the ways this race could go. So we could have A win again, but uh, we'd have to flip B and C, so C would get second and B would get third. We could say that B wins, and we could say A gets second and C gets third. Now let's have B win again, and the other way we can order it is B, C, A. Now C's turn to win finally, so we could say it's C, B, A, or C, A, B. That's really all you can do. There's no other way that these three runners can finish. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six possible outcomes. Let's go back to the very first race we talked about and see how this works math-wise. So when I started, I had three runners. Then I had two, then I had one. So we can calculate how many permutations something has by multiplying how many spots we have left to fill. Right. So three times two times one is six, right answer. You have probably been exposed to this like this. Three exclamation point, three factorial. You can find this uh, on a scientific calculator, of one of the second functions. On a graphing calculator, it's number four in the probability menu. A factorial always works like this. And let's do a different number just for an example. Let's say we have five factorial. So it'll be the number, right? Just like we have in front of the exclamation point. Times one less than the number, times two less than the, whoops. Times two less than the number, times three less than the number, times four less than the number, and on and on and on until we get to one, we stop at one because um, otherwise we have zero and then it'll be zero. Now, we had, we had six possible outcomes, or we had six permutations with, with three factorial. But when we get to five, we have five times four is 20, times three is 60, times two is 120. It gets big really quick. We went, just by adding four and five, we went from six to 120. So these problems, math-wise, can look like they'd be unwieldy. But on the ACT, remember, you don't have to use a calculator. So they won't really give you too crazy of an example. Let's talk about distinct permutations. Now, if permutations are the number of ways we can order things, distinct permutations are the number of ways we can order things such that every order we have is different, is distinct, is unique. Let's say instead of runners, I have like three letters, A, B, and B. Well, how many distinct, unique, Ways can I order this? Well, this is one way, right? A, B, B. Now the B's are identical, right? The B's don't do anything. So um, I can't really do anything with them. I mean, I can shuffle A around, so I can make this B, A, B, and then I can go B, B, A, and that's it. Because there's no difference in the B's, I can't do anything else. Now I could pretend there's a difference, but all I'm gonna do is repeat myself. So really at this point, I'm done. I'm just done. So math-wise, permutation doesn't quite work on this by itself because three factorial we just found out is six. We have to do something else. So to find the number of distinct permutations something has, it's the number of things, factorial, over repeated things. Now, if you had like a couple things that were repeated, it'd be like 
How many times the first one showed up factorial times how many the second one showed up factorial? We don't need to worry about that here. So in our example, we had three things, A, B, and B, and two of them repeated. Now, on the ACT, the math, they can make it solve for this because you'll see what happens. I can rewrite factorial this way, three times two times one, write this one this way, and by canceling the factors, the arithmetic's fairly simple. Distinct permutations are showing up more and more commonly. Didn't used to really be on the ACT at all, but you see them in the new red book. So let's look at the ACT example in the bottom of the screen, the word batter. How many unique ways can we organize batter? So the first thing you honestly need to do is count your letters carefully. One of the most common mistakes I see on this is that people miscount their letters. Okay, six letters. Um, by the way, I have seen wrong answer choices where you've miscounted your letters. I don't know if that's by design or not, but you can end up missing it. So we have six letters. That's the number of things we've got. We have a, repeat, a T that repeats twice. And that's all we have to do. Now you can punch this in your calculator. It's also not too bad to work out by hand. 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 over 2 times 1. 1 and 2 cancel. Not that the 1 really did us any good. 6 times 5 is 30 times 4 is uh, 120 times 3 is 360. That's all there is to that. Now, this seems like it's hard to remember, and you may feel a little inundated at this point, because if you've been watching a lot of these videos, if you've been working through the pre-algebra section pretty diligently, you've seen a lot of things that seem hard to remember that seem to show up on every test or nearly every test. <clears throat> I want to re-emphasize that it's much more important, much more beneficial for you to try to think about the way things work and how and why they work that way versus sitting there and staring at it. Um, if you can remember why things work the way they do, the way the ACT is written, you don't necessarily need to know going in. You just need to know, hey, look, um, there's six letters here, but it can't just be a permutation by itself. There's got to be something else going on. I've got two T's. You can kind of hazard it out. Now, do your absolute best to remember all this stuff and set things up. But at the end of the day, the best way to remember things is by understanding why they work the way they do. Now the last video in the combinations permutations uh, set is on selecting from a set, which is again, like distinct permutations, a newer topic. Um, not terribly common, but worth taking a look at.